The town administrator has the privilege to serve as chairman pro tem at this, the board's first meeting after the annual town election. At this time, I will call to order the selectmen's meeting of May 12th, 2015, and direct your attention to the first item on our calendar, which calls for the board to organize itself for the election of a chairman. I have in hand the town's, uh, town clerk's certification of the annual town election that was held on May 5th, 2015, designating the election of Nancy Heller and Bernard Green to the Board of Selectmen. Congratulations to Ms. Heller and Mr. Green. Uh, we will now proceed with the election of a chairman of the board. And so nominations are in order at this time. Ms. I have a nomination. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to nominate Neil Wyshynski. Um, Neil spent, I think it was about 13 years on uh, the advisory committee prior to joining us here on the Board of Selectmen. He was chairman of the um, uh, planning, planning and, and regulation, regulation subcommittee for a number of those years. And, but I think that Neil uh, is most widely known around town for his ability to get along with everybody. And that is, um, will I think be an excellent um, char character ex thing for the chairman to have. And um, so I would like to nominate Neil. <coughs> Very well, second. I'll second that okay. motion. Very good. Um, is there are there any other nominations? Well, in that case, uh, is there a motion that nominations be closed? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. And opposed? No. That uh, nominations are are closed, and so at this time, it has been moved that Neil Wyshynski be elected chairman of the board for the ensuing year. Those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And those opposed, say no. So Mr. Wyshynski has been unanimously elected chair for the ensuing year and will now preside over this meeting. Congratulations, Neil. <laughs> oh, we have to we have to do the name plates here. <laughs> the suspense. <laughs> So I guess uh, it's, fu it's funny how Mel had that already. <laughs> <laughs> Your speech ready. <raised. laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll start by saying a, a, few, a few words. First, I'd like to thank my colleagues uh, for this uh, honor, and it and it really is uh, an honor. So I, I I thank you all, and I hope I can live uh, up to your uh, trust and your expectations. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, my family, uh, who's here, my wife Susan, and my daughter Lisa, and uh, my son Aaron isn't here, he was going to be, but uh, maybe he's watching, maybe he isn't, uh, but he's in the midst of a, a paper and he pleaded with me to that he finish his pa be allowed to finish his paper, and, and knowing my son, I don't want to... It's, it's very rare that he begs me to, to, to continue his uh, schoolwork. So, uh, you know, my, my goals uh, as, as chair in, in, in helping run this board are one of uh, inclusion and uh, to be welcoming to, to the public and all those who uh, appear before us. And I think town government uh, is really, it's a volunteer government, and it, it, it can only survive if uh, we continue to... Uh, uh, have folks uh, who are very skilled uh, continue to volunteer and I'd like to uh, do as much as I can to widen the pool of uh, volunteers and, and, and fill uh, the vacancies uh, that we have on a lot of our boards and commissions and, and bring some new faces and I hope that uh, the, the, the election that we just had which energized a lot of the town uh, uh, bring some new faces to uh, to town government. Um, and I hope also to keep our meetings moving. <laughs> and I think uh, my, my that, that was my advice to Neil as our discussion earlier right. today was right. the, the very important quality of a good chairman is to keep those meetings moving. Right, and to, and to watch the clock, and I'm yeah, watching it yeah. now, <laughs> and to get us out on time. So I guess uh, those, are, those, are, those are small goals. And, uh, and to treat all who appear before us uh, with, with respect, um, and uh, and I think our, our our jobs will be a heck of a lot easier 
uh, when that happens, as, as it has in the past. Um, we just had an election, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can put a lot of uh, uh, some of the divisiveness that uh, that happened behind us. But uh, but election really is is a way of making uh, policy choices. Uh, we, we made some policy choices on who we elect as our leaders. So I'm, I'm welcoming Ms. Heller and Mr. Green. Selectman Heller and Selectman Green. First time I'm saying that. Um, and, and, we, and we really must be mindful of, 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 of moving ahead in the future. Um, we, we just voted a, a, an override, which means the town is going to be getting some more tax revenue. But that's not just a, 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 a it's, not, it's not a license to spend money. We, we must really be very mindful of our fiduciary obligations, and uh, we have in the past, and I'm confident uh, we'll continue to do that. Um, I'm very uh, committed, as I'm sure my colleagues are, to uh, 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 preserving and extending our AAA bond rating. And as we uh, uh, go to the bond market, that's going to become very, very important. So it's going to be important that we uh, uh, do the things that we need to do to uh, preserve that, uh, that rating. And uh, that gets into planning. We're going to have to, we're going to be doing a, a lot of uh, projects over the next uh, six, seven years, uh, some very big school projects. So uh, uh, there's going to be a, a, a very involved uh, planning piece. And, uh, and, and I'm mindful, as I'm sure you all are, that we are uh, the selectmen for the entire town uh, no matter how folks voted in the election for for us and for the override, uh, and and I intend to, and I hope you will, uh, operate uh, as selectman for the entire town. So, with that in mind, I'd, I'd like to turn the the microphone over to Selectman Heller. Thank see you. if you'd like to say a few words. I would. Um, I would like to thank those of you who were so involved in my campaign. Um, here on the board, but also at home, but also the voters. I really I feel very uh, blessed. I feel a lot of gratitude to you for the faith and the trust that you've placed uh, in me and on my shoulders. Um, I am, I love Brookline. I've lived here for many years, and I want it to be the kind of town in the future that it has been in the past. Um, not to say that we shouldn't do some things differently, we should but we should have a high quality schools and excellent municipal services and that's uh, my, one of my goals in running is to maintain uh, those. I'm thrilled about the override and I hope that uh, even though we did have some contention during the, the <coughs> debate about whether we should vote yes or no, uh, that we all love Brookline and that I hope we can all come together uh, and work together for the town that we love. And. Um, I, again, I want to express my thanks to the voters for, uh, for your faith and trust in, in me, and uh, I promise to do my best um, to fulfill that. Thank you. Selectman Green, would you like to say a few words? I would. Uh, the campaign's over, and now the uh, real work begins. I'd also like to thank the people who helped with my campaign, people I approached and sought out the assistance of, as well as a lot of people who just showed up and said, I want to help. I really appreciate that. Uh, it made me really feel good about the campaign and about Brookline. Uh, and also the voters, um, many of whom may have voted for me because they had two votes and they wanted to use them both, or maybe they thought that I uh, represented something that, that they thought was useful for Brookline. I, I appreciate uh, the votes uh, no matter what the reason. And I appreciate those who didn't vote for me because they showed some, some initiative and, and some commitment to this thing we call democracy and, and, and town government, and that's, that's very important. You know, uh, I've served on a municipal board in the past, and I know that it can be very, very difficult. Uh, it can be sometimes chaotic. <laughs> okay. um, and uh, it's going to require on my part, you know, a lot of focus, a lot of hard work, a lot of discipline. Uh, but it's also going to require on your part, you know, the, the uh, residents of Brookline, um, something also, and that is, encouragement uh, to us, positive criticism, 
uh, constructive uh, engagement with us, open-mindedness. You know, one of the things we have in Brookline that's both a good thing and a bad thing is we have a lot of smart people. <laughs> the good part about that is that they know a lot. The bad part is sometimes they think they know everything. So I'm hoping that people will, will be, uh, be willing to acknowledge the fact that this is a learning process and, and there will be many things that uh, we're going to have to sort of struggle through and, and try to understand uh, that may be beyond our current uh, uh, ideas and ideologies and, and, and ways of uh, thinking. So I'm looking forward to this challenge um, and you know, I promise I'm going to do my best. Uh, I think that will be pretty good, but you know, it uh, would also, will also require a lot of support and help from, uh, from everyone here in, in, in Brookline. So thank you. Would you like to add anything? Sure. Dr. Yes. Well, I, I um, must say I am so delighted that the voters chose to vote for the override. It uh, was the number that three of us who are continuing on placed on the ballot. And I, I think that the, the cuts we were facing, um, s small but significant on the town side of the budget, but really sort of um, the, the challenges on the school side of the budget were simply, uh, you know, too difficult to contemplate um, if this override had not passed. So I want to say thank you to everyone who supported it, who voted for it. I think it was the right thing, and I'm, I'm very glad that the majority of the voters uh, agreed with us. Uh, I also want to say how delighted I am uh, to welcome uh, Nancy and Bernard to the board. I think I heard uh, interesting ideas from both of them during the campaign, and uh, I look forward to, to working with you. Selectman Franco, would you like to add anything? I'll join my colleagues in, in um, applauding the fact that the override passed both questions. Uh, I think that um, it shows uh, great faith in the voters in, in this board and in the school committee. Um, and uh, um, I think it's going to, uh, the wisdom of that is going to uh, be seen over the next couple of years as uh, we make investments in, in both uh, our physical plant, specifically the devotion school, uh, and uh, in our educational programming through um, the expansion of um, some operating services. Um, the work isn't over that yet, though. Uh, I've heard some people say that, um, that, you know, the override passed, we can now sit back and move on to other issues. There's still pressing needs in our schools. Um, we've, uh, over the past couple of months, had a conversation about uh, the potential for a ninth elementary school. Uh, we're expecting a study uh, in the next month or so, uh, and I think that um, uh, whatever the results are, we uh, here on the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee need to take um, the results and, and look for actionable items and, and debate uh, the wisdom uh, that comes out of that, that, that committee report or that, that uh, consultant report, excuse me. Uh, and then uh, the second thing I'll highlight is uh, the high school. Uh, we anticipate some enrollment uh, pressures at the high school. That's still something that we need to have a conversation about and look for some implementable solutions. So. Uh, those are two things that I'm going to be focused on uh, over the next year. Uh, I'll applaud both Bernard and Nancy uh, uh, for joining us here on the board. Um, I think Bernard is a thoughtful leader that was born out in, in, in his campaign over the past couple of months uh, and really united um, the voters and, and residents of the town around a shared vision in a, in a really um, a great and, and laudable way. Uh, and Nancy, uh, has uh, the vision and experience uh, necessary to help us uh, reach wise uh, determinations here on the board. Um, and uh, um, she's shown her commitment to the town uh, through her previous public service. Um, and I think her strong leadership uh, and common sense approach will, will help us uh, get to good results here. Okay, so uh, with, with all that said, uh, I'd like to uh, propose uh, uh, an executive session. Uh, that'll be a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and School Committee to discuss strategies relative to the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. Um, I'm going to be moving that we go into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property uh, that may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town. So all those in favor of going into executive session, uh, well, please you, you mean if discussed in open session? If the, correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, aye. Aye. Selectman uh, Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. Again. Okay, and the uh, chair votes aye. aye.
Oh, so sorry. we're now going into executive session. We'll come back. And then we'll come back here at approximately 7 p.m. And we're going to take some pictures then. Back in uh, session, and uh, to recap, uh, what's happened so far is uh, we had an election for a chair, and here I am. <laughs> and we welcomed uh, our newest selectmen, uh, uh, Bernard Green and Nancy Heller, who will join us in a second, I'm sure. We just came back from executive session. Um, I apologize for being a little late. Um, I'll, I'm going to start with uh, announcements uh, of community events, uh, and this is item three. And uh, a couple of items that have come to my attention is uh, one on Sunday, there's going to be the eighth annual bike parade. And the parade starts uh, at Amory Park. Um, and uh, there's a five-mile uh, bike ride, um, but uh, people can drop in and drop out at, at will. And I hope, uh, I think I'm going to be there riding our, one of our Hubway bikes. I can't wait for that. <laughs> I uh, have a, oh, yeah, you've still a, got more? Yeah. I have a couple more. Uh, the Brookline Interactive Group, formerly BATV, BIG, is an, has announced uh, 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 three production grant opportunities. And uh, these are three grants, one for uh, under 17, uh, 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 youth under 17, and then a couple open to anybody. And these are one to $2,000 production grants with the theme community-based storytelling. And um, you can visit the Brookline Interactive site for more details. And the last thing on my list is uh, DPW. DPW is having an open house, and I suspect we'll hear a little more about it when uh, Commissioner Papasturgeon is before us a little later. And then also, the, uh, the and that's going to happen on the 19th of May. Um, and uh, then the DPW is also holding an informational meeting uh, uh, where uh, Primarily town meeting members, but I think anyone's invited can ask uh, uh, questions of, of the commissioner and any of the department heads. Um, and those tend to be pretty uh, informative sessions. So, uh, and they've also, uh, uh, a lot of those questions used to get asked at town meeting, and town meeting is a, is a heck of a lot shorter now that uh, the questions get asked uh, at, at, at this meeting. Selectman Daly? Yeah, this. Um Thursday is our senior health fair um, at the senior center and the the theme of the event is um, senior well not senior but brain health in general it, it is focused on seniors but um, and we're having um, I think it's fully subscribed it's fully booked up already um, so if 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 there are, if people don't show up you might still be able to get into the morning sessions and have the the lunch uh, but there's going to be box lunches. Um, what we're having, uh, we're starting off with the keynote speaker is Dr. Dennis Selko. He is the husband of our own Polly Selko in the planning department, and he's an expert on Alzheimer's. Um, we're um, having some other sessions on nutrition for brain health, and um, there'll be a little exercise session. There is going to be, if people didn't sign up and they're interested, there are going to be some smaller sessions in the afternoon, uh, and also our town departments will all be represented there, as will some other um, senior 
senior type organizations in town so that part you can come to even if you didn't sign up for the morning one but um, we uh, had this last two years ago and it was very well attended and, and very informative so I think it I think it'll be great anyone else mr. Kleckner you have something yes uh, <clears throat> mr. chairman it's my pleasure to introduce a, a gentleman who will be uh, joining the town uh, in, in the front row here, sitting next to Melissa, is uh, Mr. Austin Faison. And uh, Austin has been appointed to fill the assistant town administrator position that uh, was vacated when I promoted uh, uh, Melissa Goff, who in turn filled Sean Cronin's uh, uh, position uh, after Sean left for the state. Uh, Austin is um, uh, uh, working currently for the city of Somerville. Uh, where he gained a lot of experience in budgeting and performance management, um, helping manage the city's uh, Somerset initiative. And um, I'm really pleased to uh, welcome Austin to the town. He'll be starting around June 1st, and we've even, uh, he's even agreed to attend a, a town meeting before he starts. So that, <laughs> oh, wow. what dedication is that? But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we got I think we got that covered. So uh, I'm I'm really pleased to welcome Austin. Obviously, uh, he'll be working very closely with uh, this board in his capacity as assistant town administrator, and the advisory committee too, as well as the advisory committee. Yeah, any budget budget matters. Right. So the uh, town meeting is a whole different animal. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a it's an easy job. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll uh, join uh, 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 Mr. Kleckner in welcoming you and uh, wishing you the best of, uh, of, of luck uh, in the job. And uh, this is a great town to work for. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so we have uh, one person signed up for public comment. Uh, Ms. Lodish, the floor is yours, three minutes. Thank you very much for the privilege of addressing you this evening during their public comment session. I wish to make some brief remarks about the election on May 5th. We all know that it was contentious and that there have been comments all around about the need to come together as a town. Last Tuesday, you, Neil, said, it, quote, I'm quoting you, now it's time to take a deep breath and start putting our town back together and coming together as a community as we always have. I respectively say it's not so simple. The 40% of people who voted no on question one cannot be counted on among people who will easily come together. The lack of transparency, the failed leadership, the lack of evaluation or justification for programs, the manufactured crisis are just a few examples of reasons folks may have voted no. Sadly, <laughs> other voters believe that independent thinking is not valued in Brookline or the people who voted yes on question one were unaware of the consequences. The override won, but at what cost? At the cost of alienating 40% of the voters and at the cost of a divisive and unfortunate campaign. This could have been avoided, as I said, during the campaign by putting two numbers on the ballot or making one number of compromise. Everyone agrees that Brookline is better than this and that we must do better moving forward. To me, moving forward means working together to chart a future that plans for needs of the whole town, that acknowledges that we've got work to do to make Brookline a 21st century town, while preserving what's special, and that acknowledges that there aren't unlimited tax dollars. We need to find ways to set priorities and make hard choices. Campaigns are often fueled by rhetoric and scare tactics and selective information, and this campaign was no different. I personally found the fear and intimidation factors to be regrettable, counterproductive to open dialogue, and mutual respect and cooperation. Demonizing each other over one issue because we are on opposite sides doesn't solve other important issues that our town must address. And I experienced them personally and regret that that happened. There is a place in every election to have strong debates on issues, to rally around individual supporters, to vehemently disagree but there's no place in this community for the sort of behavior that I've just described and I call on each of you to strongly condemn it tonight. In the past week, I've been inundated with phone calls and emails with a common theme. Over and over, folks thanked me for focusing on very important issues, issues that would never have been discussed had I not been there. 
Hopefully, the thinking about long-range financial planning and leadership will not soon be forgotten. I believe that we're at a crossroads in Brookline. We need responsible planning now for what lies ahead. And I challenge you, our Board of Selectmen, to take the lead to balance future needs of the schools with the competing needs of all other town services. Moving forward, we must consider the entire community, and we must never say that any program or policy is exempt from review or refinement. With only 17% of residents with children in the schools, we must not continue to diminish funding for other important town services, the parks, police, fire, public works, seniors, roads, libraries. Equally important are diversity issues, and by diversity I mean both racial and economic. In the recent election, racial diversity was an important topic. However, we must not forget the 30% of our neighbors who are economically insecure. My hope is that in the coming year you will not lose sight of the concerns that were raised over the past few months and that you will seek creative ways to address the town's financial challenges. I'm committed to help in any way that I can. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we'll move on to our miscellaneous calendar. We have the minutes of uh, April 28th. Any uh, changes? I had edits. some edits, which I've given to Kate. No, I didn't have any. Okay, so I'll move uh, adoption of the minutes uh, as amended by uh, uh, Selectman Franco. Selectman yeah, Daly? Um, oh, aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. S Selectman Heller. <laughs> I'll abstain since I wasn't right. here. Uh, I'll abstain since I'm not here. And I'll vote aye. Okay, moving on. Um, item B, question of authorizing former selectman Betsy DeWitt to continue to represent the town as a member of the Devotion School CM at Risk Selection Committee. Mr. Bennett. Uh, Mr. Bennett. Hi, I'd uh, like to request uh, that uh, former selectman uh, Betsy DeWitt I remain on uh, the CMR, the Construction Manager at Risk uh, Committee. Uh, we are in the middle of that process. We hope to and that in a, in a few weeks. But um, since she has been a part of this uh, project uh, from the beginning, we feel her institutional knowledge and uh, leadership will be helpful. Yeah, I'm, I'm, let me just add that I think you should appoint me as her alternate, because I think she's going to be away uh, for a couple weeks uh, during this time. And, and I have agreed to, to take over the, the, uh, the Devotion School project, the, um, the committee that we set up under the rules right. of the MSBA. So um, I, I need to get up to speed on this stuff anyway. So. This is just the construction manager at risk selection process. Right. But, and then we're going to get to the other. Right. The but I'm su suggesting, as I think Tony did in his right. memo, yeah, the memo, you appoint me as her Great. alternate on Great. this part right. of it. And uh, later we'll get to the other vote uh, to appoint right. me to the head the committee. And I'll note that there's a, uh, an email in our packet from town council saying that this is totally possible to do. Um, so we're, we're in the legal clear here. Right. And, <laughs> and just to be clear, this is different than the, the big devotion. Uh, building committee. Building committee. Correct. And there's a subcommittee for the uh, CM, at, right. CM at risk. And yes, that was my second point was going to be to a... Um, motion for a uh, alternate in Betsy's absence. She's on vacation, I guess, till the middle of June or sometime. Sounds good. <laughs> That's the life. <laughs> okay, so any other discussion? See, I see none. So I'll move uh, the question of authorizing former S selectman Betsy DeWitt to continue to represent the town as a member of the Devotion School CM at Risk Committee. All those in favor say aye. Selectman aye. Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Green, aye. Selectman Heller, aye. I'll get the, and Selectman Green, aye. chair votes aye. And then I'll move the question of authorizing a Selectman daily okay. uh, as an alternate for the Devotion School CM at Risk Selection Committee for the period May 13th, 2015 through June 7th, 2015. All those in favor say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. Thank you. Um, 
uh, question C, the question of authorizing, of accepting a donation in the amount of $1,000 from the Parent Advisory Council. Is it 1000 or 10000 $10,000 from the Parent Advisory Council of the Brookline Recreation Dolphin Swim Team to be used to replace the LED panels of the timing system at the Evelyn Corain Aquatic Center. Ms. Paradis. It was such a good donation, he couldn't even wrap <laughs> up like that <laughs> number. Know, right? That's a big <laughs> amount of money. Actually, I, and, and I need to, uh, to amend that amount because there is more money that has been raised in the meantime. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so that, okay. that amount is actually going to be $12,200. Oh, okay. okay. Um, if we can reflect the minutes on that. Um, Lisa Paradis, Recreation Director, just here to um, ask you to authorize the approval of that. And I do have... Um, very briefly, if, if you will, um, here uh, the president of the uh, Dolphins uh, Swim Parent Organization, Kim Kushner, who'd like to just say a couple words. Okay. Good evening. Thank you very much. As uh, Lisa said, I'm Kim Kushner. I am the uh, president of the newly formed uh, Parent Advisory Committee for the swim team. And we are thrilled to be making this donation on behalf of our swimmers who put in three hours worth of swimming over 8,000 yards or 8,000 laps swum. So if you want to do a quick math, multiply that by 25. And um, yes, so they did the work. They raised the money. They get to use this as well as the high school swim teams. So thank you very much. This is, this is a wonderful donation. And I want please convey to all the swimmers and the parents um, our gratitude for a good job. I will do so. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so I'll move uh, ac acceptance of a donation in the amount of 12200 from the Parent Advisory Council of the Brookline Recreation Dolphin Swim Team to be used to replace the LED cap panels of the timing system at the Evelyn Corain Aquatic Center. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the chair votes Thank aye. Thank you. Question, uh, question D, item D, question of accepting a grant in the, in the amount of $8,000 from the Brookline Community Foundation Youth Fund to be used in, to support the summer day camp program partnerships with the Brookline school system. Yes. Ms. Parodies. So for the past uh, several years, we've been lucky enough to be recipients of uh, grant money each year to be able to support, as it says, our uh, summer camp programs. This is, allows us to really open up our doors to a lot more uh, in need youth, um, especially youth who are in the um, public school system receiving extended school year services. And so we have the opportunity to uh, provide them with a really um, a typical summer camp day in, um, uh, after they, they, they complete their other academic um, pieces in the morning. So we're excited to, uh, again, accept uh, a grant opportunity from the Brookline Community Foundation. It's um, every year they, they, uh, they treat us very well, and we're, we're uh, pleased to be partners with them. Thank you. And I'll share the uh, thank you to the, com uh, the Community Foundation. They do uh, wonderful work. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, it's a great thing to have uh, such a community foundation. Any, anyone else? Yeah, this, no, this is very nice. Um, I, I do just wonder, I mean, I got outvoted on the uh, Warren article about um, that would make your camp counselors get minimum wage plus one dollar. Mm -hmm. So I, I was <laughs> not in favor of it because you told us that that would impact the program, but um, I, did, I did get outvoted. So if we assume, <laughs> well, my, my question is what um, are, are, what, does that mean and what do you have other sources of funding you can seek to to make up that up if we assume that what it, when it goes to town meeting that the uh, prevailing view on this board passes at town meeting to to uh, continue to have the plus one Don't yes so I'm, I'm asking because that you mentioned that that would negatively impact this particular program yeah. And I'm wondering, like, by how much and, and you know, what, if, if there are other sources of funding you can seek or, uh, you know, if there's any way we can help you to find money to make up that difference. Well, um, a, a dollar per hour increase for each one of our, um, each one of our staff who are in that category um, amounts to about $12,000 a year for us. So, um, and this, this BCF grant is actually, um, a third of what we were getting 
just three years ago. So we are seeing um, reductions across the board uh, in a lot of ways. And of course, as you know, expansion in, of numbers across the board in many ways um, due to the school enrollment issues. It, it certainly hasn't just been a school issue. It has been a, a real issue for us as well. Um, luckily, though, um, you know, we have, we have prepared for the worst, um, which is not there yet. Um, but we have prepared and budgeted to be able to um, cut some staff with, and still stay within ratio should we need to do so. So we, we prefer not to do that. Um, uh, but at this point right now, we are, we are at about 98% capacity for our, our summer camp enrollments. Um, so we're looking, looking pretty good at this point. Should we maintain that? Um, we would look to reduce some of our, um, depending on what the outcome of the uh, town meeting vote is, we'd look to reduce some of our staff members and not just hire on, are, are, are simply just not hire on as many as, we, as many as we normally have at that rate. So that would be the, the cost. Um, I, I wonder if you might, th I remember one summer when I was, I don't know, I think a freshman in high school or something and my brother went to a summer camp for special needs kids and I just volunteered to help because I didn't have a job or anything that summer and I'm wondering if you might be able to you know put up some notices at the high school or something and perhaps get some volunteer volunteers <laughs> yeah you know um that isn't a road that we've typically gone down, um, but it's certainly an option for us. I mean, we, we have volunteers across the board in a lot of our other programs. Um, and it's certainly something, you know, we have lots of interns and, and uh, people who get paid through other, other um, funded uh, programs, other colleges and things like that through internship opportunities. But that's, that's certainly something we can, uh, we can look at. It's a good idea. Okay, any other discussion, questions? So I will move um, acceptance of a grant in the amount of $8,000 from the Brookline Community Foundation Youth Fund to be used to support the summer day camp program partnerships with the Brookline school system. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco. Aye. Selectman Heller. Aye. Selectman Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Okay. Item E question of waiving all building permit fees for all work associated with the improvements of 62 Harvard Street. Uh, Commissioner Bennett. Uh, yes, so um, uh, the school department is entering into a five-year lease uh, to lease the third floor of 62 Harvard Street. It's located uh, right outside uh, the Pierce School when they enter from the back. Uh, there is elevator and accessible entrance from Harvard Street. Uh, they'll be doing some interior renovations to create four classrooms. The construction cost is approximately $350,000. The permit fee would be $7,000. We're asking that those fees be waived. Any questions? Yeah, um, I, I did have a question because certainly there's a lot of crowding at the Pierce School, which we anticipate will go on for some time. $350,000 sounds like a lot of money to put into a building that we don't own, mm -hmm. and I wondered if we had considered buying the property or? Uh, the, the property is not on the market for sale. Uh, we okay. have uh, spoken extensively with the owners. Uh, they have expressed the possibility of renting other space in the building as it becomes available if the town uh, needs it. But at this point, the building was not on the market. We felt the close proximity to Pierce uh, made it uh, a, a good fit. Okay. I just want, what is the rent, so we're, the $350,000 is construction, what is the rental cost going to be, do you know? I don't have those figures out, so, um, okay. uh, Peter from the school department made all those arrangements. Any other discussion? Then I will move that we waive all building permit fees for all work associated with the improvements to 62 Harvard Street. All those in favor, say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And uh, I'll vote aye. And uh, moving on to question F. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am Maria Morelli, a planner okay. in the planning department. Um, the planning department reviewed possible measures the town could take to ensure that 
the appropriate state agencies were notified of the project of the project at Hancock Village called the residences of South Brookline and that any applicable reviews are conducted um, because the project will receive receive state funding there are two state bodies that are within the jurisdiction um, this is the MEPA office within the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And the second agency is the Massachusetts Historical Commission. That's why you have two letters before you. They are two separate um, reviews. They are related, but they are two separate reviews with, with separate criteria. So the possible outcomes of a MEPA review or an MHC review really is mitigation and that um, I really can't define what that mitigation could be, but I wanted to emphasize that neither review will stop the development of the project. Okay, under, uh, for the MEPA review, the relevant state regs are found at 301 CMR 11. To prompt an, a MEPA review, the project must fulfill two criteria. As I said, it must receive state funding, and in this case, the, the state the financing would come from mass development. Secondly, for a MEPA review, it has to trigger one of the thresholds listed within the regs. Those threshold categories could be land, air, transportation, uh, and most of them are quantitative uh, thresholds. For instance, is the project proposing over a thousand parking spaces or over five acres of impervious surface? Very likely, this project does not trigger any of the quantitative thresholds, but there is a threshold category under historical, and that's fairly recent. And the town maintains that this project could trigger uh, a threshold under, under historical. Uh, that particular criterion is demolition of all or any exterior part of any historic structure. Structure is defined in the regs as property, in this case it would be the property or development pattern, um, which is based on the garden village model. And we just think that it's significant and distinct enough and should be considered. Um, so typically it is the proponent who notifies the MEPA office by submitting an ENF or environmental notification form. But it's entirely up to the proponent to decide if its project actually triggers any of these thresholds. And because we haven't received any notification that this, such a form has been submitted, one of our options is, according to the regs, is to request an advisory opinion of, of Secretary Beaton, uh, the Secretary of, of Energy and Environmental Affairs, um, to confirm whether or not this project meets any of the criteria. And uh, as I stated, it. MEPA would consult with Mass Historical regarding the historical um, thresholds. Okay, in regard to the Mass Historical Review, uh, what triggers an MHC review? The, the very fact that this project would receive funding from Mass Development is enough to trigger uh, an MHC review. What MHC then does is determine if this project has any adverse impact on state register properties. What I mean by state register is any property that's listed on the state register of historic places. Hancock Village is national register eligible, therefore it's automatically listed in the state register. And what MHC is going to look at is not only the site itself, but any nearby state register properties that could be <coughs> affected. So that would mean that they would look at the rest of Hancock Village. They would also look at the VFW Parkway, which is listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Um, and the, again, the possible outcomes, if MHC determines that there is adverse effect, they might uh, recommend mitigation. That mitigation could extend to the rest of Hancock Village. I just don't know the breadth of that, but uh, it is important that they are notified within 30 days they would need to render, uh, make a determination. Mm -hmm. I would also mention that if, in fact, the secretary does determine that a MEPA review would take place, then there's a public process, and the town would then, again, have the opportunity to perhaps even suggest uh, mitigation measures or other, other aspects that we think are important. Yeah, and I'll just say that uh, what we're discussing is authorizing the chairman to execute letters to uh, MEPA and uh, Mass Historical Commission. 
Selectman Frank. Um, you, you mentioned that the outcomes of these two um, investigations by MEPA and uh, MHC are mitigation measure, measures potentially. I'm wondering, particularly in regards to the, um, the Mass Environmental Protection Agency letter, if that's a legally binding um, determination. It, I note that it says uh, an advisory opinion. So is that sort of a suggested well, thing you know, that you should I, do, or I, is it I required? don't know. You know, I'll be honest. I'll be very honest with you. I did initially speak with um, someone at MEPA. This was the assistant director. And just right off the cuff, he didn't think that this was going to trigger any of the thresholds. So what we're asking here it really is for an, an advisory opinion. Um, you know, this has to be done before the, the project actually commences or the state agency actually provides any, any funding. The mitigation could be rather benign, like just photograph and, and archive those photographs. Um, I don't think that it, it would actually stop, stop the project. Well, um, I mean, this board, or three members of this board, have a history in, in voicing opinions about um, the proposed development at, at Hancock Village. My interest is really in making sure that if there is an environmental problem that needs to be addressed, it is addressed rather than um, ignored or um, not not uh, not uh, acted upon as it as it should be to ensure sure. the, the preservation of the the neighboring wetlands. Uh, can, I, can I just respond? So. I think the, um, if, if in fact um, the MEPA decides to pursue their review, um, that becomes binding. Okay. So uh, I, I think advisory is this preliminary step that Maria is talking about. Well, I think it's important we go forward with this. I agree. I agree. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can push this so that. Um, these agencies recognize the historical aspect of this, this property. Um, and I would also be worried about the environmental impact. Um, I know that there are wetlands in the neighborhood. I don't know if they're right on, on the, that property itself. But there's also a question of blasting the ridge and, uh, you know, what, what's that, what that's going to do. So uh, I, I'm, I wholeheartedly support the effort to push these things forward. Hopefully, we'll have some some mitigation. Yeah. <coughs> As a new member on the board, uh, I'm sort of getting up to speed on a lot of this. But I was wondering if um, the historical uh, mitigation could include preservation of certain aspects of, of that site uh, that may have historical significance. Yes, possible. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move uh, that we authorize the chairman to execute letters to uh, the Mass Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, MEPA, and the Mass Historical Commission relative to the proposed redevelopment of Hancock Village by the residences of South Brookline. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So I just want to be clear. So if if one of these letters successfully gets one of these agencies to take a look at this, we would then have an opportunity to do a, f a full presentation to them or a I submit material or something. They certainly, we, we would make available any information that they, re that they requested. So this would just be the beginning of a process. There's an open comment period. Yeah, okay, They'll that's what I'm saying. So we, they, we, they can't stop us from commenting. <laughs> that is correct. No. Okay. Good. Okay, moving on. Question uh, item G, the question of awarding and executing a contract or repair of bituminous concrete patches in the amount of $201,805.25 with Mario Susi and Sons of Dorchester. Mr. Ditto. Good evening and congratulations to the new board members. This is a um, contract that we put out once every three years. The prices are fixed. Uh, we put this bid out on April 9th. We received three bids of which Mario Susi was the lowest. The work under this contract and involves, among other things, the repair of concrete patches both in the roadway and the sidewalk, the installation of uh, new curbing, and also the adjustment of castings that have uh, settled during the winter time. Um, 
Mario Susi actually had this contract three years ago, and we've had a good experience from during that time frame, and we re recommend the board award and execute the contract. You might want to have Peter go ahead and talk yeah, about the let's, second Yeah, let's talk about the next one, too, and that's uh, uh, awarding a, a contract. Winter Recovery Assistance Program, hot mix, asphalt repairs in the amount of 128586 with the same firm, Mario Susan. This is exactly the same contract as I previously described. In fact, it's the same format, some did items. The only difference is the funding source. And this is the state's uh, pothole money, so to speak, which uh, does have to be, the work has to be completed by June 30th, and the final invoice has to be in by July 30th. We um, questioned Mr. Uh, Susi that of his ability to complete this work during that time frame, and he showed, it us, showed us that, that that wouldn't be a problem. I have a technical question uh, I, on the second item. Um, I note that the, the winning bid, or the lowest bid, um, was below the grant which we received from the state. Um, what happens to the extra grant money? Is it remain available to us for use in other projects, or do we sort of have to hand it back to the state because uh, we, found a, we got a contract for, for less than that grant amount? These were estimated quantities to get us a number. Uh, we will be coming back to you with an extra work order to complete it to $144,000, $92. Good answer. <laughs> Any other discussion? Then I'll move uh, uh, question item G, question of awarding and executing contra contract PW15-16 repair of bituminous concrete patches in the amount of $201,805.28 with Mario Susi and son of Dorchester. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And just, just one, uh, I think it was 25 cents. I just, just 25 to, cents. Uh, keep the record straight. Right. And the chair votes aye. And I'll uh, move the question of awarding and executing the contract PW15-18 Winter Recovery Assistance Program Hot Mix Asphalt Repairs in the amount of 128586 and 8 cents. I don't want <laughs> to uh, lose the 8 cents there with Mario Susi and Sons of Dorchester. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco. Aye. Selectman Heller. Aye. Selectman Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a bunch of temporary licenses. I'll move them in omnibus fashion. Um, so this is items I, J, K, L, and M. So I'll move uh, granting a temporary all kinds of alcoholic beverages license to Boston University in connection with the following events held at 808 Commonwealth Avenue. Uh, reception on May 14th, 8 to 11 p.m. Reception on May 16th, 5 to 8.30 uh, p.m. I'll move the question of granting a temporary wine and malt beverage license to the Pierce School Parent Teachers Organization in connection with a fundraiser to be held on May 16th, 2015 from 7 to, to uh, midnight at 50 School Street. I'll move the question of granting a uh, temporary uh, liquor license to Pine Manor College in connection with the following events be held at 400 Heath Street, All Kinds Alcohol for an Appreciation Dinner on May 21st, 2015, 6 to 9, uh, June 25th, 2015, 6 to 11, uh, and June 14th, 2015, 5 to 930. I'll move gr uh, uh, granting a temporary liquor license permit to Lars Anderson Auto Museum in connection with the following events be held at 15 Newton Street, a uh, wine malt uh, license June 3rd, uh, 2015, 5 to 10. Uh, Walt mine, uh, w wine malt non-sales May 27th, 2015, 530 to 10. All kinds alcohol non-sales. Uh, May 23rd, 2015, 5 to 11, and June 6th, 2015, 5.30 to 11. 
And I'll move granting a temporary all kinds alcoholic beverage license to the Greek Orthodox Cathedral of New England in connection with the following events to be held, to be held at 162 Goddard Avenue, May 17, 2015, 6 to midnight, uh, June 6, 2015, 6 to midnight, June 20, 2015, 7 to midnight, uh, June 26, 2015, 6 to midnight, uh, June 27, 2015, 6 to midnight, and June 28, 2015, 6 to midnight. All those in, who knew this would, so much reading, gosh. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco. Aye. Selectman uh, Heller. Aye. Selectman Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. And we, sh we should say that while we did that all in omnibus fashion, we have the material for all the licenses. Right. And they all the, appear. The police department has taken a look at everything and, uh, and recommended that we, uh, we grant those licenses. Right. And I should have said that. So thank you for, uh, thank you for filling in the, the gaps. Okay, moving on to our um, main calendar. Item, uh, 17, uh, item 7 is a proclamation, the question of adopting a proclamation proclaiming the week of May 11th, 2015 as w Women's Lung Health Week. Is anyone here to speak to that? So we have a, a proclamation um, before us. Um, which reads, um, whereas lung cancer surpassed breast cancer as the leading cancer killer of women and is projected to kill more than 71,000 American women in 2015, and whereas pu public awareness of this number one killer is lacking, and whereas building awareness that lung cancer is the number one killer is the number one killer is the first step, followed by educating the public that anyone can get lung cancer, not just smokers, and whereas there are many risk factors such as air pollution, radon, and genetics, and whereas the American Lung Association has launched a nationwide awareness campaign called Lung Force, and whereas Lung Force works to make lung cancer in women a public health priority, drive policy change, and increase research funding. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Brookline, do hereby designate the week of May 11th through May 17th as Women Lung Health Week and urge all residents to educate themselves about the risk factors associated with lung cancer other than smoking and help build awareness of lung cancer and remove the stigma that surrounds it. That sounds like a worthy cause. Do we know of any um, uh, events planned by the health department around this? I, I haven't heard of anything. I'm not aware, but I'll follow up. Okay, so any other discussion, questions? Then I'll move the question of adopting the uh, proclamation. All those in favor, please uh, say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The next uh, item eight is a question of adopting a proclamation proclaiming the week of May 17th through the 23rd as National Public Works Week. Commissioner Papister Papisturgeon. Thank you and congratulations, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to our new board members. Thank you. Look forward to working with you all. Uh, this is uh, an annual event for us. <clears throat> I apologize, I'm losing my voice a little bit. But on behalf of the American Public Works Association, I respectfully request that the town of Brookline officially recognize National Public Works Week the week of May 17th through the 23rd of 2015. National Public Works Week serves as a time to recognize the contributions of public works professionals who design, build, operate, and maintain the transportation, water supply, sewerage, refuse disposal systems, parks and open space, and provide the protection of our environment. I'll add to that list, uh, and particularly this year, we also plow snow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a little bit. The demands of our changing world require that these employees be available as first responders uh, along with our other first responders in, in the event of any type of an emergency. Therefore, we believe it is important for our community to honor those who devote their lives to this service. Uh, I have included a proclamation uh, which we respectfully ask the board to, to proclaim. Uh, but in addition to that, I have two other items that I would like to announce. Uh, uh, along with the National Public Works Week. 
Uh, the Department of Public Works will celebrate Public Works Week with an open house on Tuesday, May 19th, 2015. Uh, to those of you who have never been to one of our open house events, I, I invite all of you to come. Uh, it's quite a, uh, a show to see. We invite the third graders from the schools in Brookline, and that includes all the schools, public and private. Uh, they join in the celebration with a field trip to our Municipal Service Center. Uh, during the day, the doors will be open from the, for the public from 12 noon uh, until 6 p.m. The school children will come, of course, in the morning. This year's theme is the, that community begins here with our public works folks. Uh, we invite all of you to come. We have many, many events uh, uh, that uh, are specially appreciated by not just the children, but by the public in general. Look at all the trucks. We have our loaders, our dump trucks, our snow fighters, our street sweepers, uh, our new sidewalk tractors, and our new uh, uh, snow eating machine. Uh, we call that the beast. Uh, they'll all be there for everybody to see. Uh, our Mad Vac litter, litter buggies will be in operation cleaning up. Uh, they'll see a welding demonstration. We'll be walking through the repair shop and see uh, where we, we repair police cars and uh, Brookline Public Works vehicles. Take a tour of the sign shop see how the town makes street signs and how traffic signals work. Uh, we'll have, of course, our recycling magic show for the children uh, where they'll learn everything there is to know about uh, solid waste and recycling, maybe even pay as you throw, who knows. Uh, <laughs> our water and sewer pipe camera will be there in action. It's always one of the favorite attractions. Uh, the kids will learn how water is connected to the house, to a home, and they'll see our Vacta truck uh, on display. Uh, we'll watch our lift bucket truck, our aerial tree trucks, uh, lift uh, people high up into the trees there to do pruning. And we'll even have our horticulturalists there teaching the children how to plant flowers uh, and they'll have a little something to take home with them. So it's a great day uh, for everybody. I don't think anybody enjoys it more than the Public Works employees. Uh, they really get a real bang out of it and look forward to it every year. The final event I would just like to mention is that uh, every year, just prior to town meeting, we have a public works informational forum, we call it, for town meeting members and other members of the public that wish to attend. This year that will be held on Wednesday, May 20th at 7 p.m. in room 111 of the town hall. Uh, and this is an opportunity for folks to come, particularly town meeting members, and ask uh, any questions that they have that are relevant to public works operations. And that, that's in addition to the budget not just budget questions. Anything that has to do with public works operations will be there with all of our staff and uh, answer as many questions as we can. Uh, this is in an attempt to try to uh, keep the lines moving at, at the town meeting at the microphones when the public works budget gets called up. So uh, it's worked well in the past. I think each year we generate more and more interest. Mm -hmm. uh, we plan on continuing it, at least this for this year and, uh, and going forward. So. Uh, you're all welcome to attend that uh, event as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say that uh, uh, town meeting has been considerably shorter since uh, you and your uh, predecessor uh, instituted that uh, question and answer session. So I thank you for that. And the Public Works Day, uh, I haven't attended, but I've heard oh, great it's, things. Oh, it's <laughs> great. I, I love it. I was just going to say, the, you get to see all the big uh, trucks. The little kids jumping up into the trucks to uh, pull the horn. Pull the horn, <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, it's it's very uh, uh, fun to go up there and see um, what's going on. And um, so from 12 to 6 in the afternoon on the 19th, Tuesday the 19th, I would urge everyone to stop in. Um, I want to again congratulate and thank uh, you and, and your staff for the hard work over the winter. It was certainly a trying period, um, and I know everybody on this board appreciates it. Uh, I also want to thank you for um, for the hard work that you've done uh, after clearing the snow. The parks and um, an open space in town look great. Uh, it's hard to believe we're ever going to see grass, you know, in the month of <laughs> February, but. Um, and then particularly today it was a windy day. I know some trees went down, so I, I know that your your fellows and, and, and gals were quick to respond and um, keep the streets open and uh, keep everybody safe so thank you for that thank you uh, we didn't we didn't think that, that we'd see the grass this quickly <laughs> it's funny how summer has just hit us <laughs> yeah. I did get an email from a gentleman today up on the, 
on the corner of LaGrange and Rangeley Road, though, asking if, when I was going to come by and remove the snow pile on the corner because he was having a hard time getting through it. So it really threw me for a loop. We have to go out and figure out what's going on with that one. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the proclamation that we'll be voting um, reads as follows, whereas uh, public works infrastructure, facilities, park, and open spaces and service are of vital importance to the health, safety, and well-being of the residents of Brookline, and whereas it's been demonstrated that public works provides critical response capabilities, experience, and support to all levels of government and town agencies in times of natural and man-made disasters, and whereas it's in the public interest of the citizens, civic leaders of this community to gain knowledge of and to maintain a progressive interest in the public works needs and programs and employees. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Brookline, do hereby designate the week of May 17th to the 23rd of 2015 is National Public Works Week, and I urge all our people to join with representatives of governmental agencies and the American Public Works Association in activities and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works employees and to recognize the substantial contributions of health and welfare they provide daily on a local and national level. So all those in favor of adopting this proclamation, please say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Yeah. So. <coughs> and item nine, recreation personnel. Question of authorizing the filling of a vacancy in the, <coughs> in the position of curriculum coordinator in the recreation department. Ms. Paradis. Thank you. Lisa Paradis, uh, Recreation. I am here to seek authorization to fill a vacancy uh, as it states in the uh, Sewell Early Childhood Center in the uh, curriculum coordinator position. Any questions, discussion? Um, I'll add, uh, as, as my predecessor did, that uh, I hope you'll work with our uh, human resources department in uh, uh, attracting a, a diverse pool of uh, applicants and uh, do what you can in that area. We and, absolutely and will. I'll add Thank Dr. Jelano to that list ah, of yes. people that we should coordinate with. So. Yes. Thank you. Selectman Franco. So um, all those in, f I'll, I'll move um, that we authorize the filling of a vacancy in the position of curriculum coordinator, lead teacher in the recreation department, Sewell division. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco. Aye. Selectman Heller. Aye. Selectman Green. Aye. And chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. And next is item 10, Council on Aging Personnel. Uh, question of authorizing the filling of a vacancy in the position of van driver for the Council on Aging. Ms. Dobeck. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the Council would also like to extend its congratulation to the new board. We look forward to working with you in this next year. Thank you. Um, this van driver position is actually not funded by the town. The van driver is funded by the nonprofit. Uh, we raise the money privately and make the, the donation to the town for the driver. Um, when this position started, it was only part time, and in the last year, we have now been able to increase it so that the van driver is now a full time position. Um, unfortunately, uh, it may be to our success that we lost the driver. Our current driver, Jason Kubiachi, enjoyed working with seniors so much that he uh, applied and was accepted into graduate school at Simmons School of Social Work. <laughs> so um, perhaps when he graduates, we can come back and have him work for the town at the, the Council on Aging in another capacity. But unfortunately, um, we are losing his service. And I would like to say that he was uh, just a wonderful driver, caring to the, the seniors um, in this winter, making sure that they got over snow banks and into their home safely, and has just gone beyond the call of duty. So we have some big shoes to fill, but um, it is an important position, and we're looking for um, authorization to fill that. Yeah, he was, he was uh, very gr uh, good, I'll, I'll 
the, very well liked by the seniors. Um, but this is a very important position because that this is what so many seniors say to me when I get over there is, you know, that they need the van to get there and that it's critical to them. And, um, and in fact, the major complaint I hear is people wish the van went more places and more frequently and we had maybe several vans or something like that. But um, it, is, it is an important position. Any other discussion? I know Jason was loved by the senior population, and I will note that Simmons is not so far from Brookline, so maybe yeah. we can entice him to continue to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping to keep him around as much as possible. Good. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, then I will move um, the question of authorizing the filling of a vacancy in the position of van driver for the Council on Aging. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the chair votes aye. And I'll also uh, uh, ask that uh, you uh, do work with uh, uh, Mr. Jeleno and our Human Resources Department to attract as uh, diverse uh, an applicant pool as possible. We certainly will. Thank you. Thank you. So now we uh, move on to item 11, uh, boards and commission interviews. And uh, Nate Peck is here for uh, um, interviewing for an appointment to the Building Commission, which is one of those uh, commissions which is just so important. Um, you don't realize how important until you, until you really get involved in, in town government, but uh, the Building Commission is kind of at the center of a lot of what we're doing. Uh, so Mr. Peck, why don't you tell us about yourself? Uh, good evening. Um, so I've been in the uh, construction industry for a little over 13 years now. Um, my education background is a civil engineering degree from Union College back in 2002. Um, and then I worked at Turner Construction for 10 years and I'm currently the uh, president at Kaplan Construction here in Brooklyn. What, um, what uh, sparked your interest in the, in the building commission? Well, uh, my father-in-law Ken Kaplan has been very involved with the commission for quite some time. Um, and seeing his involvement with the town, being a resident of Brookline, um, it seems like a great commission to be involved with. Well, I worked with Ken on the Wrangell School Project, and I, I, I would say his role there and all of our building commission members, it, it's been invaluable, um, yeah. you know, to some of our projects to have the the hands-on knowledge that, that building commission members bring. Right, and the commission is going to be getting very busy with the uh, devotion school and some of the other school projects that are coming down the pike. Yeah, it's an exciting time for sure. Yeah. Do you have a particular expertise in construction? So for example, you, have you done a lot of green construction or a lot of uh, sort of mixed use type development? Yeah, I've, I've worked on uh, quite a few project types, um, from aquariums to office buildings to museums, um, the Brookline Teen Center, I did the Bright Horizons here in Brookline, um, you name it, I've probably come across it at some point over that time period. Any other questions, comments? I have a question. Uh, t tell me what museums and aquariums you've worked on. I'm sure. just curious. Yeah, no, I worked on uh, three projects at the New England Aquarium. I did the Marine Mammal Center, um, mm -hmm. which is on the back side of the aquarium. If you've, if you've been there recently, it was redone about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the aquarium's um, holding facility down in Quincy to prepare for the giant ocean tank renovation. And uh, I did all the pre-construction work for the giant ocean tank. Uh, however, I left Turner at that point and joined Kaplan before that project began. Uh, and I worked on the MGH Museum, the uh, copper building there down on Cambridge Street. Right, yeah. And the PBD Essex Museum as well. Okay. okay. I think uh, we're not making appointments tonight, but uh, I think we'll do it shortly because uh, that's a commission we need to keep as fully staffed as we can. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you for coming. Right. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you. So we're moving on to item 12.
which is a public hearing to discuss approval of the five-year consolidated plan and stra strategy and the FY16 one-year action plan and submittal to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Mr. Biola. Good evening. So we are requesting that the board authorize and approve the submittal of the town's five-year consolidated plan as well as its uh, fiscal 2016 annual action plan to the Department of HUD. Um, the annual action plan actually serves as uh, the town's application for our upcoming fiscal year. Um, and the information shown in the, in the fiscal 16 plan uh, provides a budget and specifics to what projects we're looking to fund in the upcoming, in the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, and generally, you can think of the, the town's consolidated plan as the roadmap for the next five years of where the town hopes to spend its CDBG funding. Um, the annual action plan, as, as I mentioned, is, uh, contains a specific list of projects and budgets. It's uh, expected that projects and budgets, or projects receiving CDB fund if CDBG funding in the program year, uh, follow along with the objectives noted in the consolidated plan. And as a program requirement, they, they generally they have to benefit low and moderate income individuals and families. Uh, Process-wise, the town is required to submit these two plans to HUD prior or no later than 45 days prior to the close of our current fiscal year. Um, community development staff is, is part of the needs assessment uh, for the plans consulted with many stakeholders, individuals, agencies, and, and probably most importantly, the, the public. Um, and they, we did this in order to determine, again, how the highest and best use of CDBG funds over the next five years. Uh, the result of this outreach and information gathering led to the content of the consolidated plan. Uh, we have a CDBG advisory committee whose role is to make a funding recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and I know those funding recommendations were available in your packets for this evening. Um, in general, that committee meets, usually have, meets over a number of meetings. This year it happened in March where they they hear funding requests from various applicants and they deliberate on uh, funding recommendations that you receive and ultimately vote on as part of your approval of the one-year action plan. Um, this year, building on the uh, needs assessment and citizen participation process for the, uh, the consolidated plan, the committee deliberated on funding for projects such as the Housing Authority's uh, capital improvements projects. Uh, there was a request from Parks and, op and Open Space for some uh, improvements to Aspenwall Park. And there were also uh, applications for uh, affordable housing projects, both town-sponsored and private, pl privately sponsored. Um, the committee, in keeping with HUD regs, also has to program uh, our public services. And unfortunately, uh, un the HUD regs preclude you know, we're limited to 15% of the, the town's annual allocation uh, with regard to programming for, for public services. Uh, every year they work their magic to find a fair and equitable way to, to fund all of our worthy social service, service applicants. Um, prior to submitting the consolidated plan and action plan, uh, the town's required to hold two public hearings. And in reality, our, our public outreach process is more extensive than that. Uh, the first public hearing we had was done at the Housing Advisory Board, and it was mostly related to community housing needs. And tonight, this actually serves as the, the town's second public hearing. Prior to tonight, um, the community development staff took out a, a legal ad, and it did one of two things. First, it notified uh, the public that our planning documents were able to be reviewed. It said where they could be reviewed, how best to get comments to the town for consideration, and as well, it set the uh, tonight as a public hearing date um, where there'll be, and this provides another opportunity for public input. So the final step prior to finalizing these plans is again to, uh, as part of this public hearing, to allow for additional public comment. Um, I know there's a lot before you. There's a lot of information. I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have related to process or or uh, content related to the plans. And I just want to clarify, the vote may or may not say it, but we are actually looking for approval and um, 
authorization to submit these documents to HUD uh, at the at the conclusion of the public hearing. So with that, um, I have a question. Um, there's a, one of the big differences is uh, between the request and the uh, recommendation of the CD advisory uh, committee mm -hmm. is with respect to Gateway East, right? Where uh, the advisory committee is not recommending funding. So. Um, how does that affect the Gateway East project? Um, will, will that funding that isn't coming from this source be uh, available from other sources? Well, I guess the bigger answer is at one point this was expected to be a fiscal 16 project at the state. Um, recently the project has been moved back a year. So the need for this funding is, well, it's important to have the funding in hand. Uh, we have a little bit, a little bit more time to, to resolve the outstanding planning issues related to the Gateway East project. We're actually having a public hearing tomorrow night. Uh, there'll be more discussion about bike accommodation. Um, but to answer your question, I don't know that we would have been able to spend the funding if it was forthcoming this year, just because the the project has been moved back a year at the state. Okay. I'm, I'm this board's representative to the CDBG Advisory Committee, and I want to note that uh, two of my fellow committee members, Sitska Humphrey and Jamie Colon, are here in the audience. And, you know, if you want to hear more about why they didn't vote for Gateway East, um, maybe they can speak to that. Um, I will say that the Public Services Section D, if you look at the um, thing, is, is what um, Joe was talking about, where we're limited to 15%. That's, we would always, uh, there's so many needs there, we would always love to put more into that category. And unfortunately, we can't, and so there's a, you know, pull and tug um, as to um, what gets the funding. Um, and, and I will say that this year, um, I think the, we gave a little bit extra to the Brookline Community Mental Health Adolescent Outreach Program. That was at my suggestion um, because if the override had not passed, they were slated to get a cut uh, in some other funding and I thought this might help them out. If you want to, um, you know, cons consider that, I mean, um, that meant a little less, I think, for the uh, Steps to Success, Success's Youth Training Program. So, um, you know, I, in, in light of the fact that the override passed, I don't know if people want to revisit that again or not. Um, we um, did try, try to give, we do try to give um, some money to the Brookline Housing Authority, um, and that included, um, I think the Energy Efficient Resident Security and Landscape Renewal Project is Brookline Housing Authority. Am I right, Joe? That's right. number three in the housing list. Um, the 112 Center Street Window Replacement Project, that, uh, that as you may know, is, is part property owned by Hebrew Senior Life. Um, and they, you know, made an application and the committee, um, it, it is low income people in there and the committee uh, found that favorable. Um, but as I say, uh, you know, maybe you should ask if any of the other committee members would like to sure. address any of these. Would any of the other committee members like to speak? I, I see no takers. <laughs> Do you have an amount in mind to switch out of the uh, adolescent outreach program into... Well, I'm, I'm not saying you need to do it at all. Um, we did give them, as you see, if you look at the fiscal year 2015 allocation um, and what we gave them this year, we gave them like about $6,000 more. Um, we went down on the... I, I just mention this and maybe somebody else wants to comment it, on it but um, given that I'm guessing since this board voted for it that the um, the minimum wage plus one dollar um, thing may pass at town meeting that will affect that youth training program 
and so you know there there may be they may have a little greater need I I, I, I certainly uh, I I should have mentioned at the beginning of the meeting on Saturday night I attended Brookline Community Mental Health's uh, annual fundraiser which was a great event and we heard from some young people who had attended their adolescent program and it was it was very moving actually to hear from these people who had gotten help so I'm not I'm, Brookline Community Health certainly can use the money and put it to good use. I'm not saying you have to make any change. I'm just saying we did kind of uh, adjust a little bit in their favor and away from uh, the Steps to Success program based on, you know, some concern in case the override didn't pass. And since it has passed, I just throw it out there that, um, you know, so the, it's a possibility. The, if the Steps want. to Success program is number eight. Yes, youth training so, program. So that took, uh, that's a, a little bit of a cut from last year. Right. Yeah, come up to the microphone. And Jamie, say your whole name for the record so it gets okay, into Okay, I'm Jamie Cologne. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you all have met me by now. <laughs> 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 we um, decided from most important to least important, although they are all important. However, there's wants and needs. And um, the reason we aimed, we gave the Brookline Mental Health more funds is to in a way, avoid future problems. And what I mean that is, the more money they have, the more they can do, the less people go into prison. Because a lot of people that have mental health end up in prison because they don't have the sufficient funds mm -hmm. to give those people with mental you know, problems um, services. So that's why we gave them most most of the money. And do you have any other questions on why we voted the way we did? <laughs> well, I, I had urged all of you to maybe think of giving them a little bit extra because they might get cut if the override didn't pass. I don't know that's, if that influenced you or not. That's, but that's very true. So I was just going to say now that 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 isn't uh, the case if people want to. I mean, I, what, I, I don't mean to say you have to make any changes because Brookline Community Health can certainly put that money to good use. Right. Um, of course, the Steps to Success program is very nice too. I think Jamie's point uh, yeah. is, is well taken that this is really an investment in, 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 in the future and has the potential to um, save us money in the long term. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah, I'd like to echo that. I think it also uh, not only uh, saving us money in the long time, but addresses a very important issue um, in this country, and that is, um, I, I think, the fact that many encounters between police and young people have to do with um, police not being able to handle the type of reactions that young people with mental health issues or uh, other issues uh, present. Um, and this, you know, hopefully will be a way of, or the funding would be a way of helping ad address that problem, uh, which, which I think is critical, uh, both in Brookline, but also more, more drastically throughout the country. So. Huh. That's a good point. Yeah. As I say, we heard from these two young people at that fundraiser, and uh, both of them, um, who'd been through this, this program said that they were contemplating suicide and had it not been for this program, um, they might not be with us at this time. So I thought it was very brave of them to stand up and it was um, uh, very moving, as I say, and, and eloquent about how, how important those services are. I have a question for Mr. Viola. Um, we've, um, um, how to phrase this? Um, we, uh, as part of the the the, um, the Brookline Place development, we got a, a yeah. contribution from Children's <laughs> Hospital for three hundred thousand dollars to cover um, the demolition of the overpass, the pedestrian bridge over Route Nine. Um, and 
uh, we had previously voted to allocate um, CDBG money towards that, that demolition. Um, I'm wondering if you can give us an update on uh, whether those funds have been reallocated uh, and if they haven't, sort of what we can expect in the future. Um. Sure. So at the time when we submitted a request for the 300 in CDBG for bridge demolition, it was, it was based, that amount was based on the information we had at the time. Uh, our public works department had tried to solicit uh, input from bridge, bridge demolition contractors as a reasonable cost for a demo, uh, what a, a demolition would cost. Uh, the committee last year voted to provide the $300,000 in CDBG funds with the understanding that at some point when private funding from Children's Hospital was forthcoming that we would, we, we would revisit the amount. Uh, the, the best update I have now is, is that based on a more substantial look at the bridge, our public works actually in, engaged a, a bridge demolition contractor who uh, spent a lot more time, frankly, than the individuals who put together the previous quotes, uh, leading us to believe that it's a substantially higher cost than $300,000. In addition to that, other than the cost of the means and methods that they put together for us, there are some uh, needs for uh, variable message boards, public outreach, police details that we think is, could bring the cost of the bridge demolition up even more significantly. So our preference is to, is to keep the $300,000 intact and, and earmarked for the bridge demolition until such time that it actually comes down and then have a discussion with the board about how to reprogram at that point. That would be, that would be uh, the preference of my department. I think Public Works feels the same way. Uh, and, you know, at some point we expect we'll be back with a recommendation to uh, how to do, how to move the additional, how to move that money to other pro programs as you had originally asked us to look at, so. If the children's hospital uh, mitigation payments are, are how much, 375 if I remember? No, it's 300. 300. Right. And, and we would use 100% of those in any event. Yes. So this Is would it, supplement. The yeah, program. I mean, that was last year's CDBG money, mm -hmm. though, and I have, heard from Ms. Lewis, who is sitting in the back of the room and uh, maybe could comment on this, but you can't leave it sitting around and not spend it for very long without getting into trouble with uh, right. the CDBG rules. Right. And we've actually been able to use a very small portion of it to do some due diligence with regard to, uh, they need to know what kind of materials are present, in the, whether it's uh, asbestos or so we've used a li very limited amount to do some testing related to uh, to inform the overall project budget that we're going to need, frankly, going forward. Um, but Gail is right. I mean, in general, we, we can't sit on top of CD CDBG and not spend it. We, we get flagged from HUD, and they ask us to come up with a remediation plan. But I think our the use of a very limited amount of funds to move forward with some environmental testing will we'll sort of we'll stave off that for the immediate future until we can actually get back and, and make an informed recommendation to the board. So what, what, what's the timetable on the bridge coming down? Do, do, do we know that yet? I heard today August. Uh, there's a lot that obviously needs to happen between now and then. Um, Public Works, I know, is in the process of putting together a, uh, an RFQ or an RFP to engage a, a demolition contractor. And, uh, you know, through that process, they hope to have a, a solid demo budget. And we hope to review the, uh, the exclusions to, the, to that proposal, again, for issues such as uh, variable message board, police details, uh, whatever we need to do to, uh, to get us through the project. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, again, the latest I heard, to, uh, the latest news is potentially August. So I think the right move is to leave the $300,000 where it is and, and in the interest of efficiency, have, um, have Mr. Viola and, and, and the rest of the team come back to us in one fell swoop to reallocate the money. Um, yeah. 
So are we looking for a vote? Yes. Ah. Okay, this is a public hearing. And is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this uh, uh, item? I see none. <coughs> so I will... Excuse me. Yes. I have, a, I have a question just about the process. And um, I noticed that one of the places that you put a notice about, uh, about your, the plan mm -hmm. is in um, the town newspaper, the tab. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having been a lawyer and having put lots of notices in there, it's, I don't know how many people read that. And I'm wondering what else you do to uh, notify people about um, your, your plan and get comments. Uh, you obviously have had some, so. Yeah, we do. I mean, we have, we have email lists. We have individual relationships with people. Um, we've used, we've used uh, town social media. We've tried to get the word out as, as, as best we can about the availability of these documents and the ability of the public to comment on them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, but that being said, we still have to do a legal ad. Right. There's still a requirement that we do that. So, but we are looking at other alternative methods of, of getting the message out. So. Good. Okay. Okay. So we're ready for a vote. Okay. Yeah, I think we actually need two votes: one on the five-year consolidated plan, and one on the one-year action plan. If I get that right. Yeah, I, I think I included a suggested vote um, in a memorandum to the board. It was a request for clarification. I'm happy to read it or. I think something, as Selectman Daly just mentioned, would be sufficient to just to note oh. that we're voting the approval and authorization to submit gotcha, both gotcha, plans gotcha, to HUD. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so I will move approval of the town's five-year consolidated plan and strategy in the FY16 annual action plan and approval to submit the documents to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the chair votes aye. And, and can I just say to the two committee members and Ms. Lewis who are here, but also to the other committees who aren't here, that everyone uh, is very diligent at trying to um, work through this each year and wishing to stretch the dollars as far as we can to as many good uh, organizations as possible. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Viola. Okay, so now we're moving on to warrant articles. Um, article 8, the uh, budget. So, Mr. Kleckner? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the board has uh, previously adopted a, a budget, uh, actually adopted two, two versions of a budget, but since, uh, since that time, as you know, of course, the override has passed. And so, um, uh, last, late last week, the advisory committee convened and also passed a budget based on that uh, funding level. Uh, and there are a few differences so uh, from where the board um, uh, voted, and so we've asked for this article to be reconsidered. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Melissa Goff in a moment to review those. I think the most significant uh, substantive issue was the funding for the preservation staff of the, of the uh, Planning and Community Development Department. Um, fairly minor in the in the scheme of things uh, a point two full-time equivalent and um, I have uh, uh, in the interest of, of trying to reach a consensus and maybe a, a small part of the healing process that we've discussed uh, would agree to uh, to that um, and uh, Melissa will explain how that can be funded along with some of the other um, minor I would consider minor changes uh, including some wording changes, uh, which you have in your memo, but I'll ask Melissa to uh, to review that with you in a summary fashion. Can I, can I just ask, though, I, my understanding was that uh, we have funding for 1.8 in preservation, and the person who currently holds the 0.8 did not want to be well, full-time. That's is changed. That? Okay. That has been changed now. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, just going through the memo, the, the special appropriations, there were two conditions that the advisory committee put on special appropriations for um, Brookline Avenue Playground, provided that no funds shall be expended for construction prior to December 1st. And that same condition was also put on the uh, funding for the Pierce Playground. Um, that's something that the advisory committee recently has um, 
put on put as a condition on CIP projects when the design and the construction are funded in the same year and it's just a way to kind of put a pause button on the project if the design comes out something that maybe people aren't happy with that there's an opportunity at a subsequent town meeting to revisit the, the appropriation and um, so this has been in place for a couple of years now and I think Aaron's comfortable with the language as is because the construction wouldn't be happening before that point anyway um, the next item is uh, a condition of appropriation that was um, we actually recommended be struck because um, it pertained to uh, repair and maintenance money previously um, repair and maintenance used to be funded out of services and supplies and Charlie used to always have to go in front of the board to request transfers and um, those transfers re required advisory committee approval a few years ago we consolidated the account so all the money is in services so he doesn't have to go back and forth to advisory and the board as frequently so the the condition really isn't um, needed anymore um, the next item is the, the preservation, uh, which Mel outlined as well. And then they, um, they added 2,673 to the pavement marking account. Um, so the, basically, the difference between the board's vote is the 16,792, which we had recommended be added to the building department um, for the solar carve out charge that we had estimated um, was going to be slightly higher than what we had budgeted for and um, so the advisory committee did not take that recommendation they instead used those funds for preservation and pavement markings um, I think we're we're comfortable if the board wants to go that way as well because um, in, in similar circumstances we may have some estimates that come out after the fact for energy um, I'm thinking vehicle uh, gasoline and diesel rates sometimes come out later after we've already voted on uh, a budget amount and we usually say let's see how the year plays out this is a modest amount and um, we usually use a three-year consumption estimate on all utility accounts anyway that um, if the board did want to come in line with advisory I, I would be comfortable with that recommendation can, can we get an explanation though what is the um, solar carve out pass through charges so it's um, basically a requirement of the supplier um, they have to have a certain green component in what they provide us for energy uh -huh. so this is a, a piece of that it's basically factored into their rate so our electricity accounts are probably going to be higher than our contract our consultant based on our consultant estimates Es estimates that there potentially could be a $16,000 difference between the estimate that he had originally provided us. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, so if that materializes, we're going to fund that? Explain that to me again. Sorry. S so s it's similar to, you know, other estimates that may come out after the budget's already been set, we usually say, let's see how the year plays out. There are a number of things that, get that are factored into building an energy budget. Um, price is one component, consumption is the other. So if Charlie does a good job with energy conservation, we very well could see this 60,000 number go away. What weather? And if weather worse comes to worse, we go to the uh, reserve fund. Correct. Okay, fine. So it's in the interest of, of reaching consensus and, uh, you know, making the budget appropriation process a little smoother than yeah. it might otherwise be. In between, in, in this turn backs frequently so it's not a guarantee that we would have to go to right. the reserve fund to fund right May, I, I would speak to uh, especially in this budget season it's especially uh, important that we go to town meeting with a an agreement uh, <laughs> given the history of this budget season. well I personally don't mind going to town meeting and uh, with some differences. Frankly, I think town meeting enjoys uh, a little um, back and forth on some of these issues, but but the, these seem small enough that I'm, right. I'm certainly willing to uh, go along with them. And I think the pre the preservation commission, the extra point to FTEs, while it may not be a lot of money, I think the impact uh, is going to be large. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, are we close to hiring somebody um, there? Yeah, because I, yeah. I think a big part of the problem in that department yeah, has been um, um, people with various reasons 
that we're not working, um, not spending much time at work. Yes, we have hired a full-time planner who's starting May 26th. Great. Cool. I, I'd just like to say that, that I was in full support of that move to hire, to bump that up to a full-time position. I think that the number of LHDs and NCDs and in, you know, increasing, and we have another one coming before us in, 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 in the town meeting, um, means more work, and it's difficult, I think, a struggle for the people who are there to keep up with it. So uh, I'm full support of that. Okay, so I will move a, f a recommendation of favorable action on the advisory. Probably reconsider first. Up, uh, yep. up, okay. So first I will move reconsideration of uh, Article 8. All yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if those who didn't participate before can, they can vote on the ultimate. I think we have to abstain. Yeah, I think they have to abstain from the reconsideration, do they, or can they vote for it? I don't know. I can't. We didn't consider so we can't reconsider. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Well, no, I think you can vote, you just can can't it. move it. They, right. Uh, okay. okay. I, I, sure. the chair, I, I the chair. It's will the chair, move. so if that's what he says, <laughs> okay. So I will move reconsideration of Article 8. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, it's aye. Selectman Heller, Selectman aye. Green. Okay, <laughs> Chair votes aye. Um, before you vote, I did want to also add that I also had the advisory committee um, vote on the special appropriations, but knowing that we potentially might have some minor corrections. MSBA is reviewing the language for devotion school. Bond Council is reviewing the language for all bond funded items. And um, the comptroller is also just looking at um, the, the language in the vote. So there could be some minor changes, but nothing substantial and relevant to, you know, okay. moving any item, any dollar amount. Okay, so noted. So we may see this again. So if we do, we do. Um, so I will move the advisory committee's budget motion, favorable action, which includes the revised numbers, plus uh, the revision to the article, the um, conditions of appropriation, and the uh, special uh, appropriation language uh, for um, uh, Brookline, uh, Avenue. Brookline Avenue and Pierce uh, Playground. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly? Aye. Selectman Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the chair votes aye. And we're going to table? Well, article yes, I'm going to suggest that we um, wait till next week on Article 12. This is the snow and ice sidewalk removal um, bylaw. Uh, the advisory committee did vote on Thursday night, I believe, and it was a very kind of it was a confusing, confusing vote. vote. It was 8-7. Uh, and. Uh, um, <clears throat> I do believe that the intent of both the selectmen and the advisory committee to sort of narrow the scope a little bit and perhaps take this in a couple steps over time uh, is, in, is in sync. But since I didn't have anything in writing, um, I would just prefer to take it up next week when we have something specifically. And I'm a I've asked the legal department to work up a very clear um, uh, red line version of, of the vote. And I also uh, recently got an email on Article 9, so that will probably be on the calendar for re reconsideration next week as well. What, what is 9? 9, nine is, is the town meeting member, honorary yeah. uh, town meeting right. member. Oh, right. right. Uh, Mr. Fry is uh, yes. asking us to uh, recommend no action. And, and oh. I've, I've heard a rumor that we may hear a reconsideration request on Article 14, which is the bottled water. So okay. that, that may materialize. Okay. okay. So more, more town meeting action to come. So let's move on. Excuse me. Yes. Reconsideration of the Board of Selectmen's uh, decision to uh, submit it to a committee. Reconsideration of what? Uh, reconsideration of the Board of Selectmen's um, recommendation that the substance of the article be referred to okay. committee. I guess we'll hear more when we, yeah. when the motion is before us. Okay. Um, okay, I'll turn this over to Mr. Kleckner to just have to uh, go sure. help well, us with the appointment. Yes, well, there's, um, this is in the case of the Neighborhood Conserva uh, Conservation District Commission, um, and uh, we have one 
uh, a vacancy and uh, one half. Can I just say to the new members, we usually uh, vote en masse when we're doing the appointments. We don't do a roll call vote. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, that was new to me too. I didn't realize that until I got here, but uh, <laughs> that was my responsibility to do that. But, but anyway, uh, we have um, an incumbent um, uh, alternate appointment of Dennis DeWitt, and he has um, is seeking reappointment at this time. So I will uh, read the name of Dennis DeWitt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so um, I asked for the next item to be put on the agenda, and this is um, looking at all of the different committees and boards and that uh, the selectmen are liaisons to and uh, we have a bunch of uh, vacancies and we might want to consider some reshuffling um, so wherever wherever you see DeWitt or Goldstein that's 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 a vacancy well you and I are going to do town school partnership right, right? so that one's um, town okay that's near the bottom. So that's uh, Wyshynski. Town School Partnership is going to be Wyshynski and Daly. Um, Selectman Heller and I have been discussing swapping the Climate Action Committee. So um, Selectman Heller will take over as the board's rep to the uh, Climate Action Committee. Um, I had expressed a desire to, to go on uh, licensing uh, review committee. So, so Selectman Franco on the licensing. Does, does anyone want to go on there with him? <laughs> anyone interested in licensing? Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say I, I, I feel I like I'm fully committed already, so I'm not uh, <laughs> volunteering for... I mean, I'm, I, I have volunteered to do devotion, so you can put my name by that, yeah. but I'm not volunteering for anything else at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm willing to consider licensing. Okay. Sold. Oh, seems interesting. Is it? Well, no, I guess you're going to find out. <laughs> Selectman DeWitt loved it. I don't know whether other people the love it or not. The marijuana dispensary regulation yeah, that was one. exciting this yep. last yeah. year. And I will say, I will say, I... I think that one is going to be quite controversial, and I'm already hearing a lot from the neighbors that they, the direction um, Selectman uh, DeWitt and Goldstein went in was um, for less regulation than maybe we had all talked about at our last meeting. And uh, frankly, from what I hear, I am not wild about what they proposed. I think we need more regulation than what I'm hearing, so that one could could be quite um, exciting. With with I th yeah, I think that that's a <laughs> yeah. separate conversation for this board. Um, and right. uh, I think I personally, as a new member of the the commission, need to uh, take an in depth look at the proposed regulations for marijuana dispensary, and I'm sure Selectman Green does as well. So yeah. uh, stay tuned for further developments there potentially. I seem to have inherited the Gateway East, so put my name. Though I don't know if this advisory committee is still active, um, but the, the project is moving ahead and we're okay. engaging in public process, whether it's through Maybe that. It will, it will probably evolve to some extent. Um, I, I'm just going to suggest to you, Mr. Chairman, that that puts you on a lot of committees. Yeah, I was just looking. Then, I'm, my really, name is all over this thing. Uh, as chairman, you have a lot of obligations, and you might want to ask one of the new people if they uh, would be interested in that one. Um, well, uh, I, I've been pretty deeply involved in the, in the last for the last six months. So that if I'm going to give something up, I don't know if it would be that one. Hmm. Um, what about complete streets? That one's almost, that one is almost coming. Done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's coming to uh, okay. uh, a head. Um, you know, the cable is just starting, but uh, I see Mel uh, Melissa's getting nervous. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Well, that, I mean, both of our new members are lawyers, so you might be able to hand off the, uh, that one to somebody. What do you think? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so the the um, new committee will be meeting in the I think the first week in June. Um, we need to do ascertainment, which is to assess the community's needs, and that needs to be done by October. So it's a short time period for the Comcast renewal. RCN is followed right after that. Um, so so. There's no learning curve to jump into yet because the, the committee hasn't started meeting yet. Um, you've got some history with the Brookline Interactive Group. Yeah, um, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Since I've been the kind of liaison with Big, um, well, well, I, you know, I would be willing to to join you. I don't know that I would be a perfect person to be. Uh, that's so a liaison because I don't know anything about the subject. Okay, and so why don't you? From me, so. so why don't we put your name on here? Um, with uh, so there'll be two selectmen on that uh, committee. Mr. Green, you're coming away pretty light. Um, <laughs> it's all a roof study committee. That's done. So. Kind of interesting. <laughs> kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it, you may have seen at your table. There's a sort of a revised one that we we xed out. Um, oh, okay. one. So uh, if you can, if you see that, um, the MLK committee has an opening. Yeah. Um, I was sort of um, tricked into that, committee <laughs> and I've already chaired one of his <laughs> meetings. <laughs> so that's it. I He's on there. Yeah, and, and I think that um, it'd be appropriate because I was um, involved with the um, um, drafting of the Warren article to do the diversity, inclusion, human relations okay. piece. Sold. But I understand okay. that um, Mr. Franco wants to. Uh, I would or, never. Or may, maybe willing to. I, I would be willing to. Uh, I think that you've <laughs> got uh, uh, you've got some real expertise there, and I wouldn't want to deprive you of the ability to see yeah, your, right. your work uh, <laughs> carried into action. Very um, diplomatic. If, if it would help the chair, I'd be willing to go on uh, labor um, uh, advisory with you, uh, if that's a, a meaningful step that would lessen your load, but wouldn't uh, well, I don't, myself. I don't know if it would lessen it. I would um, value your input. <laughs> And it, it's not one that has met too often, though. So what you're saying is it's a great committee to be on. Well, can, I make, can I make one suggestion with that committee? If you don't, um, usually labor advisory is a, a, an offshoot of town school partnerships. So generally, the assignments are the same. Because um, sometimes the town school partnership will go into executive se session as the la labor advisory committee. It, it hasn't happened in a, a several years, but it's usually the same assignment. Sounds like you got another one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, one that one hardly ever meets, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. So the one okay. glaring thing I see here is uh, zoning bylaw. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Um, I... Uh, is there... Uh, th that's one, actually, that could... It hasn't met in a while, and it generally meets prior to the closing of the town meeting warrant <coughs> to consider. Um, I'm, go I'm gonna well, I'm gonna say I, I think that again might be appropriate for someone who has legal training. Um, I think there is an issue that I would like to see this. Zone. I'm not volunteering to do it. I want to be perfectly <laughs> clear, but there is an it issue I would work. like to see the zoning bylaw take up. And that is a look at <coughs> our parking requirements. And I think that in some sense that our, uh, as we had our many discussions about Hancock Village and, and we were appearing before the <coughs> Zoning Board of Appeals, they were insisting on meeting our zoning bylaw for parking, which meant that they were paving over a lot of green space. And they wanted extra parking for their units. They wanted a large number of cars, which is going to add traffic to the neighborhood. They were, you know, wanting to, happy to pave over the green space and everything. Um, I really, it did occur to me at that point that, that our 
our parking requirement, which is large. And many people over on in, in the more <coughs> densely populated part of town feel like it's too large and you should be encouraging people to use public transportation and not encouraging um, <coughs> the, this excessive um, number of, like, I think it's, isn't it, it's two <coughs> spaces even for like a one bedroom apartment. Right, it's uh, two spaces even for a studio. Even for a studio. I thought we changed that. No, that's still no, on the no. no. That's still on the books. So it's, I mean, that's pretty crazy, two spaces for a studio. Anyway, I think there is so an important. people live there. Yeah, but do you really want them to be oh, having no. two cars? Um, uh, that raises a lot of issues. Yeah. I'm saying I think there's person. an important uh, discussion. discussion that somebody needs to uh, grab a hold of and start that ball rolling. So I, I think that I, I know the zoning bylaw, I mean, periodically things come up, like there's warrant articles about zoning and the zoning bylaw committee takes a look at those. But I'm suggesting that, you know, I think if someone were interested in this issue, I mean, for, from their, the, the green people feel very strongly that our parking requirement's too high. Um, and I, as I said, I was kind of convinced <coughs> as we were dealing with Hancock Village mm -hmm. that maybe um, we certainly, you know, could, could, there could be some adjustment of it, I think, that maybe you could allow people, if they did other th green things, to have more parking and less parking if they didn't do some other things. I mean, I think there's certainly a very interesting discussion that needs to go on there. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, if either of you are interested, then I would suggest. Well, one, of, one of the issues that you have to consider is if you reduce the parking requirement, does that encourage developers to build, you know, more and bigger units? Right. And what does that do to the to the population in the town and school yes. population. I mean, there, there's many issues. Those, those right. there are. It's, a, it's a complicated. It's complicated. Yeah. And I was um, actually saying after dealing with Hancock Village, I'm going to go in with a warrant article and, and the planning department, for the very reasons you just stated, mm -hmm. said, whoa, I think, um, you know, that you don't want to be rushing into that and there needs to be this discussion and everything. So there, there's, there's definitely, you know, some important issues, I think, mm -hmm. if anyone wa is uh, interested in that and could, wants could to take that. Could you continue your discussion of, you know, the, uh, the schedule of events at, uh, that this committee would... would well, to, so after, yeah, after after typically warrant, it's, uh, it's prior to the closing of the warrant. Mm -hmm. They'll meet a couple of times to discuss potential warrant articles and they and and sometimes they've met uh during the town meeting vetting process to consider changes to warrant articles that have a, as they go through the vetting so it's, but but actually you know this was prior to neil being on the board but when selectman Benka first got on the board he uh, took on this committee and and they were proactively right. looking at some of the zoning bylaw, not not just responding to warrant right. articles other people brought, but looking at things and potentially right. bringing bringing their own warrant articles forward. So, so I guess part of it would be uh, whoever is wh whoever is going to be the selectman's rep will have some mm -hmm. um, say over how proactive or not proactive this committee will be in for the next you know, year. So it would be part of your vision of what the committee will be doing. I actually, in, in thinking about this originally, I was thinking I would go on it, um, but as, as Selectman Daly has, has reminded me as, as I look at the list, this list has gotten quite long. That um, <laughs> Is that something that maybe Nancy and I would? Uh, yeah, we've do? often had two Selectmen on zoning bylaw. I, I think, you know, there may be a little hmm different okay. nuances and perspectives that may be mm -hmm. helpful. Okay. Sold. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that sounds good. So, um, so, it lo uh, uh, so, uh, Selectman Heller will come on to cable and access television with me. And then, um, Selectman Heller will take over, uh, climate action. Um, 
The Sluckman Green will be going on to diversity, inclusion, and human relations. Or well, actually, it's the liaison. You're not going on the commission. Yeah. Please. Um, I w uh, Devotion School is going to be, but that's going to be a separate vote. But that's going to be Selectman Daly. Um, Gateway East will be me. Hubway is me. No change. Labor Advisory is myself and Selectman Daly. Licensing will be Selectmans Franco and Green. MLK is Selectman Green. Uh, town School Partnership will be myself and Selectman Daly. And then <coughs> Zoning Bylaw will be Selectman Green and Heller. Do we need to do a vote or? Uh, we, we don't usually. It's okay. your, your um, you, you just tell us okay, then, what we're on. Then I just designated everybody on those committees. <coughs> Got it? Okay. So now, we, there, there are a couple of items at the bottom of the page that we do need to vote, and these are... Um, these are your assignments, too. Oh, these are my assignments. Oh, uh, can I just say to the new members that if you have an issue that interests you and you want you know, uh, to come to the rest of us or come to the chairman and say, I'd like a committee appointed to do this and I'm willing to take this issue on, there's plenty of opportunity for that right. as you go along. And that's what happened with Hubway, for example. Yeah. Isn't that almost over? Hubway? No, that's, that's ongoing. Um, okay, so uh, Committee of Seven is where um, it's, 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 it's a short-term assignment where uh, we select various uh, um, architects, architects and, yeah, right, uh, various contractors who do work for the town. And um, there are two small projects that um, I'm told uh, the same person should be on, uh, the Building Envelope Repair Program and the elevator modifications, uh, uh, typically for something like that would be one meeting. Um, and this one is probably a good one to, for some of our newer members to get their feet wet in a committee of seven. So any, any volunteers? I would defer to my new colleagues, but I would be happy to take that on if nobody else wants to step up. Uh, I'd be interested in the Coolidge Corner Library feasibility study. I've done. I'm, a, I'm on seven. that one. Oh, you are? I, okay. I'm taking that. But I've done committees of seven, so oh, I'm not, okay. it's not, you know, I mean, I'm happy to do the, the first two if you want me to. Um, no. the, the, just the thing you should know before signing up is that you actually chair the committee of That's seven, fine. so. Okay. Yeah. It's, hmm. um, okay, and then I'm going to take on the Coolidge Corner uh, Library. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, oh, what are modifications? What's that? Um, those are together: the building ele envelope repair and okay. elevator mm -hmm. modifications. And I don't even know what. I, I think they're multiple buildings. School, school, mostly. I think school buildings. These are projects that have been approved in the capital improvement plan, and this is the selection of the uh, architect or engineer that will. will yeah, you um, get do the project. You get proposals from either. Uh, it's called an the architect or from the construction a, mm -hmm. or whatever and you go through them and you uh, you guys oh. rate them and um, come out with favored, the favored, the favored one yeah um, okay so um, Mr. Kleckner, you had something to say. Well, I, I did want to uh, say, I think I misspoke mis, uh, when I was uh, dealing with the Neighborhood Conservation Commission appointment. It is true that Mr. DeWitt is an incumbent as an alternate, but there is a vacancy for the same term as one of those uh, selectmen appointees to the major committee or the main committee. And so that's, that's what uh, I had intended to uh, have the board vote on. So either you could re-vote it or I would have the minutes reflect that uh, he would move from an alternate position to a, a regular position on the uh, Neighborhood Conservation District Commission. Does anyone have an objection or should we re-vote it? Or you can just call, call it again and we'll, we'll re-vote yeah. it. Yes, okay, so in this case it is um, uh, the uh, permanent position of, of, um, on the Neighborhood Conservation District uh, for a term to expire in 2017, Dennis DeWitt. Aye. Aye. All right. 
Okay, and the last item on the agenda is the uh, selectman's appointment to the devotion school committee. Um, this is, uh, as we all know, an important project. It's the largest building project. In I will, I will say, fortunately, while. selectman DeWitt has done most of the work. So it's <laughs> or this phase of it, we're yeah. going to another yeah. phase. No, but the um, for the building committee. Um, you do have some meetings after you go on, but you know that's okay. You're less involved in the process at that point, except for Helen Cherlupski, who stays involved with each and every large and small decision. <laughs> so I will move that uh, Selectman Daly be our representative on the Devotion uh, School Building Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman uh, Franco? Aye. Selectman Heller? Aye. Selectman Green? Aye. And the Mr. Chair, Chairman, can I also ask yes. that you um, also vote to um, fill the vacancies that were uh, generated by, well, let's, uh, let's see, I guess the yeah, school committee have hasn't a, done one yet. I'm going to have a list um, next week. Could you because at least they, do, uh, But you should do Melissa Goff. Yeah, if, if you um, could just do the, uh, for Sean the local Conan. budget official, um, yeah. which was vacated by Sean Conn and should be replaced with Melissa Goff. Okay. Budget official, so I'll move uh, Melissa Goff as the local budget official appointee to the S Devotion School Building Committee. Those in, all those in favor, please say aye. Selectman Daly. Aye. Selectman Franco. Aye. Selectman Heller. Aye. Selectman Green. Aye. And the chair votes. And I'll work with you, Nancy. To yeah, I did. I did talk other. to Helen, and she. We were. Okay. There's also. I. I think the parent representative is. Um, and there may be some other changes that is not. Made, yeah. Oh, the the parent is actually listed yeah. on the committee. No, I think okay, the so other, I think it's the other that's just an issue with. Uh, so we'll, we'll yeah. Work, so Sadna Brown is no longer <clears throat> a devotion parent. She's moved to a different school. Right. So um, so there's a, and. Um, well, we'll come back next week. Yeah, there's a couple that are that are that are, that are going to be changed, but I'll have a list for you later this week. Okay, so that concludes uh, tonight's board of selectmen meeting. Thank you. Good job, Neil. Good, good job.